in this video i am going to share with you my most favorite strategy of all when it comes to property and that is commercial conversions and i'm going to talk you through some of the main reasons why i love commercial conversions and hopefully once you've seen the video you're also going to start to fall in love with commercial conversions There's a whole host of reasons why I think commercial conversions are probably the best property strategy. But before I go into that, if you're not aware of commercial conversions, as a very quick explanation, this is where you find a commercial property and you convert it either fully or partially into residential. And usually when it's partially, the ground floor tends to remain commercial and the uppers or at least half of the back of the ground floor is converted to residential and this has become popular over the years due to prior approval permitted development uh, which has made it easier because the planning process is easier because you don't need to obtain planning uh, and it just is quicker and people like it and the way that the high streets are working at the minute and retail is working uh, there's more and more opportunities available to do commercial conversions with obviously covid more people working from home changing habits in terms of how many people actually go into offices and other buildings to work which means there's a more availability of commercial space uh, which is rife and open to, to more commercial conversions so that's one of the big things right now which i think you ought to be thinking about so let's look at some of the reasons why i think commercial conversions are a good way forward so the first reason is, generally speaking, commercial properties are cheaper than residential properties. Now I know it's different for different areas, but if you look into any particular uh, city uh, or in a particular area, uh, residential properties, the price per square foot is a lot higher than commercial properties price per square foot, uh, sometimes two or three times, sometimes even more. Uh, so you can, if you were looking to buy a buy to let, you could use those funds to buy a commercial property or a bigger commercial property per square footage wise uh, and then convert it into more flats and therefore increase the overall value of that development plus get more rent because if you've got one buy to let in a particular area and let's say the rent for on that property is a thousand pounds. Of course in London and surrounding areas it would be a lot, lot higher and in the north it would be possibly lower but let's just assume it's a thousand pounds but if you bought a commercial property convert that into 10 flats uh, and the rent per flat is let's say 700 pounds times 10 is 7,000 which gives you a lot more than the thousand pounds for the house so that works really well if you then break up the units uh, in terms of title splitting that gives you even higher value uh, therefore when you refinance you can pull more money out uh, so it gives you, it releases cash or releases most of the cash that you've invested. Uh, so that is my first reason why I think you ought to be looking at commercial conversions. Number two, link to number one, is there's a lot more commercial property available right now compared to residential. So the market's really hot for residential. Properties are selling very, very quickly and at record prices. Commercial property, not the case. Let me give you three examples of three properties that I've been involved in in terms of purchasing in the last nine months uh, where we've got fantastic deals. Property number one, on sale for £690,000. We bought it for £570,000. That's £120,000 discount. Very hard to get if you were buying a residential property at that price. I know there's a different situation and circumstance and somebody watching this video might say oh well I bought a residential property which is on sale for 690 for 570 or less there may be some cases like that but on the whole you aren't gonna find many in residential properties the second one property on sale for 550,000 pounds purchased for 375,000 pounds a discount of 170 five thousand pounds that's huge it's massive third one property on sale for five hundred and seventy five thousand pounds purchased for four hundred and twenty thousand pounds again one hundred fifty five thousand pound 
discount so you can see it's a huge huge reduction from the asking price uh, and with covid and everything else that's going on you can get some really good deals on commercial properties now you may have to go through the planning process because you might not qualify for perm permitted development that's a different story for another day but the opportunity is there and i think you ought to seriously consider looking at commercial conversions three once you do a conversion if you're looking to run a service accommodation business then you can claim capital allowances both on the purchase as long as the previous owner hasn't claimed all the allowances and you do take certain steps to ensure you can qualify to claim capital allowances and if you want more information on that uh, make contact with me and we'll go through that in detail because this video is not about capital allowances and I don't want to bring tax into this particular video but happy to talk you through that so then you've so you've got potentially capital allowances on the purchase and then you've got the possibility of claiming capital allowances when you refurbish and redevelop so you've got two lots of capital allowances then you've got something called the annual investment allowance which allows you to accelerate your capital allowances so it's a really really big advantage in terms of being able to save tax going forward depending of course on how much you can claim by way of capital allowances so that's something you ought to think about a lot of people by the way that i come across they buy commercial properties and they didn't make the right inquiries and take the right steps to claim the capital allowances uh, and the value uh, in the uh, contract says zero which makes it a lot harder you've then still got something called integral features which you may be able to claim but that's a lot less than what's available up front so you ought to make sure when you're buying commercial property speak to someone like me and there's others out there as well by the way who will help you with a capital allowances claim do not rely on your solicitor because your solicitor will tell you they do not offer tax advice and they will strongly recommend that you speak to a tax expert who deals with capital allowances but that's a big one for you to think about number four permitted development as long as you've got the right class use you can write to the council and within 56 days they have to come back to you to confirm or deny whether you can use permitted development or not on that particular class but truth be known you'll obviously speak to a planning consultant who will be able to tell you whether that particular property qualifies or not so you'll know that before you even buy the property because you'll know what the existing planning use is for PD rights so you can do that it's going to save you a lot of time a lot of cost because going through full planning takes time uh, and it costs a lot of money uh, and it can be excruciatingly slow depending on where things are and which local authority you're working with which officer you're working with uh, and I've seen some applications take a long time where with PD and prior approval it's a lot slicker a lot quicker uh, so you'll do pretty well if you can uh, make sure that PD rights apply to that particular building depending on the class use number five there's usually less work to do when you're doing a commercial conversion as opposed to building a new house or new homes so right now you'll see some videos on this page uh, in due course on the Bicca project that I'm working on where we're building 40 houses uh, and that takes a lot of work infrastructure civil engineering all that type of stuff uh, and is a lot harder to do usually than a commercial conversion could be through the commercial conversion you've got the basic structure in place uh, and including the roof and everything else uh, and you're just usually changing the internals so you may sometimes be knocking walls out or building in new walls but generally speaking obviously the footprint rem remains as it is sometimes you may be extending or adding extra uh, room to the car park or the other, other area within the, the landscape of uh, the title that, that you've purchased but generally speaking most of the time you're just changing the internals uh, therefore there's less work required to do that than there is in terms of building houses from new now the cost might end up being the same because it depends I mean commercial conversion to the price per square foot uh, isn't any less than new builds in my experience but if you've got the right team and you've got the right contacts and you can buy 
materials at a decent price which right now is a difficult thing to do by the way but by the time you watch this video in three or six months time uh, it should have eased off a little bit uh, but overall commercial conversions are quicker and in my experience easier to do than new builds if you ask somebody else out there by the way uh, they might have a different view but I'm here to share my view with you and that's what I think number six you find a lot of commercial property in prime locations so like I said earlier high streets retail taking a hammering so you'll find a lot of property in city centers market town centers uh, which is available to buy what does that mean that means there's more demand usually uh, in urban areas what it also means is good bus links good train links good transport links people don't need to rely on cars when they're living in city centers generally speaking uh, there's schools nearby there's other amenities nearby it works incredibly well because obviously the way town centers are created there's a lot around them uh, which makes it easier for somebody when they're living there in terms of having amenities uh, and those prime spaces are mean there'll be a lot more demand for that space compared to where if you've got property in a rural area uh, because urban areas obviously usually are more densely populated because there's more demand for them uh, and what you'll also find is again depending on the class use and if you happen to apply for planning uh, councils up and down the country usually do like the ground floor or at least part of the ground floor to remain as commercial or retail so what you could do is convert the uppers and the part of the ground floor possibly into residential and keep the front ground floor as uh, commercial and you can uh, create a, a, a short or a long-term lease and give it out to somebody on rent and that's going to work incredibly well uh, and I've done that a few times with clients uh, and it's always been a big tick in the box uh, and I'm personally not a big fan of converting the whole building in the city center to residential because I think we ought to leave some commercial space there's still demand for that uh, locally uh, and uh, it just looks good as well so think about that and if you're not comfortable with having commercial or uh, a mixed-use property then obviously just go out of the town center there's other retail parks or possibly business parks is what I mean uh, where you can find those properties and convert them and if that doesn't work then there's commercial properties dotted around most areas uh, which are going to be rife and right for converting into residential property and just pick one of those number seven depending on how creative you are you can do more with the commercial property than you can do with a residential property generally speaking bigger footprint there's more rooms there's more floors uh, and th there's usually obviously depending on what you're buying uh, there could be more car parking or, or more land that comes with it so you can make something really nice you can design the rooms in a particular way if you look at any of my videos on the conversions I've done I am NOT a big fan of rabbit hutches so we don't create 36 square meters or 38 square meters or 40 square meters really small one bedroom flats I think people need space uh, and you make them nice uh, and if they're slightly bigger you can get more rent for them people are more comfortable now those developers who are selling sometimes just want to maximize the number of units and that's fine that's their choice that's not the business model I adopt and usually I say usually I've never sold any uh, commercial conversions I always keep hold of them rent them out that works better for me uh, for two reasons really is obviously if you sell them then you'll pay tax on the profits whereas if you keep them and, and if, if that happens that's not a bad thing by the way but if that happens then you've got less money left over to recycle and reinvest in your next uh, investment but if, if you don't sell them you've not made a gain per se therefore there's no tax to pay so the, the, when you refinance and pull, pull all your money out you've got more to reinvest and the second thing is I'm a, a fan of creating cash flow regular cash flow uh, without selling the asset uh, so I can create the cash flow through rental income and then of course also rely on capital appreciation which isn't in my control but we know how the economic cycle works property does increase over a 15-20 year period increase significantly by the way it's usually double so that is a, a big bonus for me as well but in terms of 
creating the layout and how things are designed there's more room for creativity if you use a really good architect with the planning consultant as well to take their advice and lay out the, the, the use the space to lay out something really nice and different i think people are looking for different they don't want the same old boring stuff you need to make sure when somebody walks into your uh, commercial conversion or your development think i want this so two quick examples for you london road boston we we completed a week before uh, covid we, we rented out all 21 rooms within a couple of weeks at the start of lockdown so this is uh, March 2020 another one that I did after that again in lockdown lockdown hadn't finished uh, so this is the back end of lockdown so we're looking at April May 2021 uh, and uh, rented out 12 flats in I think three and a half four weeks went really quickly and the reason for that basically was people come there have a look think wow this looks really nice uh, and interestingly the two bedroom flats went a lot quicker than the first one bedroom flats and uh, they just went like hot cakes that's because people want nice space people want space which is spacious and not tight uh, and it looks good feels good uh, and the locations are right and you tick enough boxes for them you'll have tenants and you'll have tenants long term i'm a big fan of having long term tenants of course ideally being a, uh, somebody who loves property i want everybody to own their own home that's not going to happen for a long time depending or looking at where we are uh and generally within the country so until people need to rent property i'm happy to support them to, to do that if they want me to support them to help them buy property i'll happily do that for anybody uh but while they are renting properties from me i want to make sure I give them beautiful homes and beautiful apartments and beautiful flats so they can live there with their families and enjoy the space and enjoy living there uh, with hopefully what they would see as a good and reasonable landlord. So those are my reasons, so some of my reasons at least anyway, why I think commercial conversions are a fantastic strategy. It's a strategy I fell in love with about five or six years ago and I've liked it ever since. Uh, and I think if you're into property and you're doing single lets, and you're looking at looking at a different strategy obviously you can look at uh, rent to rent you can look at service accommodation uh, you look at HMOs you can go into deal sourcing uh, or you can look at new builds or you can look, go into more speculative stuff like uh, obtaining planning permission on strips of land but my favorite strategy above all is commercial conversions and I generally aim to do at least one conversion every single year alongside the other strategies that I pursue and I think you ought to be looking at commercial conversions in a very serious manner because they are a game changer I did do a video if you click this link here I showed you an example of a commercial conversion I'm about to do uh, where we had two different options uh, of creating flats I think it was like I, I did the calculation for you on 20 flats and 30 flats to show you the difference so you can look at the return on capital deployed and look at the difference in numbers and values have a look at that that's going to give you a good idea in terms of doing a very basic back of a cigarette packet valuation but also the possibility of uh, what you can create so check out this that video right here uh, and then make up your own mind <laughs>